we reuse a lot of our boards all the time and repurpose them at any given time. So this is an example of what I was saying. Anyways, that's outside the scope of this uh, review. Main part is the actual robot kit. So after following all the steps in step 12, it looks like we're good to go. We've installed all the boards. We're good to go. We have not connected anything yet, as you can see. We still have some components left over, but we really don't have much left. We have the capacitors and things like that, some jumper wire, USB. We have the pink sensor kits, which we have yet to install. And we have some remaining components here, which we'll use later. OK. Moving on, step 13. <clears throat> step 13, basically connecting the battery and the motor wires. So this is fairly straightforward. These guys only plug in one way. Do not force it. If it does not plug in, flip it the other way. So there we are. We've just plugged in the power. Take note that we did not plug in any batteries. We just plugged in the power, the power cable itself. The batteries are still not plugged in. Now, this is the tricky part. You have two wires, two connectors, two connectors. Which one do we plug them into? So according to the documentation, the assembly manual, it says the green and white motor plugs into motor A socket. Which one is motor A? So it looks like this one here is motor A, which is, here's the USB port on the, on the card, here is motor A. Make sure that you follow your particular board. It might differ, especially if there's another revision, and you always want to make sure you have the right one. And there's only one remaining, but if you double check it, it goes blue and white wire plugs into motor B socket, which is this one here. And we've gone ahead and that's it. I suggest tucking away the wires, that way uh, they're not sticking out. And there we go. We have now wired up the board, we've built the robot kit, and now we're, you know, we're moving quickly. Step 13 is now complete. <coughs> now the assembly guide goes on to talk about the controller board, basically the, ro the propeller robot controller board, what all the components are on the board, the jumpers, the headers, things of that nature which we will get into. One thing I recommend is reading everything. If you're not familiar with boards or any type of microcontroller, I recommend you read it, understand it, know what you have to do with it. One of the other things that they've included, which is very nice to have, and Parallax has always done a good job of this, is they have some sample code towards the back of the guide. Page 23 is where I see the beginning of this and it basically tells you how to test the LED, how to plug, you know, how to test your DC motors. What I would suggest is if you've never coded before or you're new to it or you just want to get familiar with this code, I would suggest just copying what they've done. Don't necessarily go by the samples that they might include in a CD or something online. Actually copy their their actual samples and use them. Write them down, code them up yourself, understand what they do because that'll give you the nuts and bolts. I'll tell you the inner workings of how this is going to work for you. And you can easily, easily build upon this provided that you have some basic knowledge of programming. Now if you don't have basic knowledge of programming, that'll be the most challenging portion for you. Because, you know, in order to get any any robot kit to do what you want to do, you need to do some level of programming. You know, there are different levels of programming. This one is a little more advanced. However, if you have another type of robot kit, which is, this is the Parallax Sumo Bot. This is a little bit simpler. It's basic. Um, easy to work with, easy to build this unit. Um, again, different purpose than this one here. This one's a lot more robust, whereas this one is not. Also, you can do a lot more things, roll around with this one a lot more than you can the Sumo Bot. This one is designed for competitions, so you can compete against other friends, uh, people who have other Sumo Bots, and see who wins. And these are driven also, key point to make is these aren't driven by DC motors like these are, these are actually driven by servos. And uh, well, that's in our other demonstration and our other product review of the Sumo Bot. We suggest that if you're interested in that, you check that one out. Okay. So, at this point, we've completed plugging in everything. Now, what we're going to do in the next demonstration is we're going to show you what we've done with the kit. We're going to show you how we've programmed it, what we've done, and things like that. What I'm also going to go ahead and do is, before I program it, we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the, the, actual, uh, the actual ping sensors. 
So I don't see any instructions here on how to do that. So we're going to actually figure that out on our own right now. It doesn't look to be too hard. And actually, I've got to say, I've used these ping sensors in the past plenty of times. And they're very easy to use. They're reliable. They work very well. Um, you know, I've, I've, mixed, I've mixed and matched a lot of these things. And these have actually been some of the best that we've used. As you can see, a lot of our projects, like right here, uh, we've actually used, uh, we've actually constructed one of our, this is one of our, uh, basically a robot head that we're making. And as you can see, we've used parallax sensors and they're very nice. Um, you can purchase these nice stands, these nice mounts for the parallax sensors, and they mount nicely. They come with separators, and they work very well. Um, this, again, is not part of this demonstration. It's just kind of to show you that we actually do use their sensors for other things outside of just the parallax. Um, outside of the parallax uh, robot kit. Now, I'm looking at this here. And they've provided all the different sensors, or all the sensors, so three, are going to be mounted towards the front of this unit. Now, my first question is, is how are these going to be mounted? So when I start looking at all the components that they gave us here, I quickly see that, okay, well, we have the cable, obviously, to connect them to. We have a bunch of screws. I'm familiar with these as well. We have a bunch of separators, nuts, washers plastic washers, things like that. Okay, it's easy to, for me to see that what we're going to be doing is is that we're going to be mounting these here, like so, and that's going to be a separator between the actual unit and the, the actual uh, chassis. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of these. Again, just like I said earlier, you're handling delicate, delicate components, and I suggest handling them with care. Never touch any of the chips that you see on there with your bare hands. And if you do touch them, make sure that you are static free. I'm making sure to keep clear of it. And believe it or not, you don't need to necessarily touch them. All you have to do is get in close enough for a static discharge to take place. And what actually happens is you'll form a dimple on the chip, and that that ruins the chip at that point. It might work, it might might not work. So. Don't run the risk. These sensors can run you, especially if you have a lot of them. They can run and be quite expensive. So I'm going to continue to open up all of these. Now what we're going to do, just to make this easy on you, we don't bore you to death, is that we're going to only mount one of these on the video, and then uh, we will actually show you another scene where you have them all mounted. Also note that it comes with a bit of a styrofoam or some kind of a uh, foamy material on the connectors. Keep them on there. Um, basically keeps you from bending those those connectors there. So there you have it. We have three and these are going to be mounted nicely right there. Okay, I'm probably going to mount them upside down. That way the cables can go. I'm not sure actually. Maybe not. I'm going to mount them as such. Mount it like this. Now, some of the other things you're going to note is that we've got these little rings. You're going to say to yourself, what are these rings for? Well, it's very simple. These rings go right in here. Why do you put these here? How do I know this? Number one, I've used the Parallax uh, ping mounts before, and these holders are exactly the same size. Number two, if we run wires through there that are bare, we run the risk of getting them cut. Um, if they get cut and they make contact with the chassis, you might wind up frying something or ruining the sensor or a little bit of everything. And that would be something that uh, would be that would be something negative actually, so you wouldn't want to do that. And you ask, well why aren't these cables uh, why aren't these cables that we first ran through the top chassis like that? Well the reason is because these wires are a lot thinner and from my experience plastic coating on these on these over here, these over on my uh, on the chassis itself are a lot thicker, whereas these are a lot, a lot more, a lot thinner and easier to get into. So now let's see how we're going to actually do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it with the connectors downward. The reason why is because when I mount it downward, it's going to be right in front of the hole, 